From food founders to the origins of our flavorful obsessions, if it makes your mouth water, it's pop history. I'm J.D. Witherspoon, and this is Pop History, a game show that will leave you wanting more. On today's menu, we have a three-course meal of culinary-themed trivia so good you can practically mm, taste it. And we've got three contestants who all want to have their cake and eat it too. Let's meet our players. Coming to us from the Food and Footprints YouTube channel, it's Jumi. Hey, Jumi, how you doing? Hi. Now, Jumi, listen, I know that you and your husband met in New York City, and I do have to ask you, which borough do you think has the best food? Queens. Unbeatable Queens. Queens? Okay. <laughs> Queens? All right. Queens. Okay, for sure. All right, let's move on. He's a chef and a food photographer hailing from Brooklyn. Please welcome Hip Torres. What up, Hip? What's up? All right, so Hip, in your Instagram bio, it says that you're a certified recipe tester. So can you elaborate a little bit for us on that? And I mean, you know, how do I get that job? Because I'd like to test it. I'm super lucky enough to work behind the scenes of different food shows. I get to test recipes and make cool swaps for those magic TV moments. That sounds amazing and delicious. Finally, her kitchen may be tiny, but her talent is enormous. Joining us from the Instagram account Tiny Kitchen Treats, it's the remarkably talented Marisol Morley. Hello, Marisol, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello, how are you? I am well. So before the show, you told us that your favorite meals are actually sauces. Mm. Could you please explain a little bit about that? And yeah. what types of sauces are we talking about here? Poison sauce if I'm eating Peking duck, a red wine sauce if I'm having some filet. I'm just kind of a saucy New York girl. And uh, usually the food, the food is a vehicle for okay. the sauce. Like the bread is a vehicle for the butter. That's an amazing way to think. I like that. <laughs> well, there it is, everybody. We got three hungry competitors, and we love to see it. Now, this should be a real treat, so let's get into the game rules. We got three rounds of pop history for you, and you know round one is a full-on trivia challenge. Those top two scorers after round one will move on into round two. Now, the winner from that round two will move on to the final round where they will face our mystery history expert for a chance to take home the grand prize worth $500. Let's get to our first round called Pop the Question. In this next round, we've got six balloons that will be shown visually on the board, and behind each balloon is a question and a corresponding score for a correct answer. The more points the balloon is worth, the harder the question. And there are 100 total points up for grabs in this round. Now, the first person to buzz in after the question is red gets to guess first. If you answer incorrectly, your opponent gets a chance to steal. And you will be buzzing in by raising your hand up onto the screen. Cool. Let's pop the first question. Here it is, red balloon for five points. What candy bar originally had a trio of vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate flavors all in one, but was scaled back to include only chocolate during World War II due to rations? <laughs> Marisol. Alpine chocolate? Unfortunately, that is incorrect. Would Ju ah! Jumi or Hip like to steal? <laughs> oh, hold on. Jumi, do you want to try? I don't know, Hershey's chocolate? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, the answer is Three Musketeers. Oh. Three Musketeers, Jeez. yes, oh, okay. yes. I'm not gonna <laughs> get that. All right, y'all, we're going to the next one. Blue Balloon for 10 points. What famous cereal's triumphant slogan first appeared on a billboard for a minor league baseball team in Minnesota in the 1930s? Oh, Marisol? Frosted Flakes. Close, but no dice. Would you guys like to steal? <laughs> okay, so it seems that no one answered because no one figured it out, but the answer is Wheaties. Yes, Wheaties. And of course, of course, that famous breakfast slogan is Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> this is Green Balloon for 15 points, which is multiple choice, so no stealing, everybody. What condiment was thought to have medicinal qualities in the 19th century and was even sold in pill form by entrepreneur Archibald Miles in the 1830s? A, mustard, B, mayonnaise, 
C, ketchup, or D, horseradish? Marisol. Horseradish. And, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> it's the grossest one. I figured it had to be it. Well, Marisol, unfortunately, that was wrong, and there's no stealing on this question, but does anyone else have a guess? Mayonnaise? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, it's not mayonnaise, no. Well, my God, Hip, you can do this 50-50. <laughs> I mean, there's only two. Uh, is it ketchup? Is it ketchup? It you is it. ketchup. It is ketchup, yes. <laughs> we are on to our next question, yellow balloon for 20 points. Before it became a part of the superfood trend in the early 2010s, what food chain was the nation's largest purchaser of kale? <laughs> Everybody's face. Kale? What? <laughs> Whole Foods? <laughs> I'll give you a wrong answer. I don't even know if 2010 this was around, but Hale and Hardy? Hale and Hardy. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, that is not it. The correct answer for all of you is Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, what? yes. What? If you can believe okay, it, well. Pizza Hut used kale in their salad bars, but not for eating. Yeah, that's right, it was used as a garnish. Next question, orange balloon for 25 points, and this is multiple choice, so no stealing. What candy was Ronald Reagan famously obsessed with going so far as to order over 700 bags per month to the White House? A, M&M's, B, candy corn, C, jelly belly jelly beans, or D, Skittles. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious treats, snacks and stuff. <laughs> Marisol? A, M&M's. Unfortunately, no, it's not M&M's, nope. But here's the real one, jelly beans. Jelly Belly, Jelly Beans. Yes, the Jelly Belly factory in Fairfield, California actually includes a literal shrine to the former president. Who knew? Not us. Yes, that is also true. <laughs> Purple Balloon, 25 points, and this is our last question for this round. Here we go, everybody. Breakfast is not the most important meal of the day, but in 1944, General Foods coined the phrase to sell more boxes of which cereal? All right, here we go. Gonna help you out a little bit. The purple color of the balloon is your hint. All right, I'm gonna give you all five seconds. That's wrong five, again. four, three, two, one. The answer is grape nuts. Yes, grape nuts. With that, what a round. We're checking these scores, and as we all know, we got zeros across the board. No big deal, we're just having fun. But guess what we have for you? It is tiebreaker time, and that means two people who are closest to this answer will be moving on. Here we go. Planters Peanuts have been sold since 1890, but when was Mr. Peanut unveiled as the mascot? And we'll start with Hip. I would say, 1920. Great choice. Now we're gonna move on to Marisol. I also feel that's a great choice because he looks kind of like a 1920s guy with a little, so I'm gonna say 1923. All right, Jumi. 1930? Mr. Peanut was actually unveiled in 1916, which means hip and Marisol had the closest answers and will be moving on. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. And unfortunately, Jumi, you will not be moving on to the next course of this delicious meal we call Pop History. But thank you so much for playing. We had a great time. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. We are down to two players who think they've got the culinary comprehension to take on our mystery history expert, but only one of them will move on. Now to find out who will square off against our mystery expert, let's play a little game I like to call this, that, or the third. In this round, I will show you all three images on the screen along with a question. It is your job to correctly identify which image answers the question. And if you get it correct, you can earn the points. But if you get it wrong, your opponent can steal for half points. So it's still anybody's game. Now who's hungry for the next round of trivia? Here we go. Question number one. 
Whether they are baked with sour cream or sliced into delicious chips, potatoes are a staple in almost every culture. But from which country do they originate? Poland, Ireland, or Peru? Marisol? Peru. That is correct. Yes. There you go. Finally. Hey, there it is. Yeah, it's all good. When McDonald's opened its first store in 1955, it had nine items on the menu. Which one of these items was not on that initial menu? Milkshakes, Big Mac, or French fries? Hip? Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> Milkshakes were not on the menu. Oh, it's incorrect, actually. Marisol, would you like to steal? It's the Big Mac. That is correct, Marisol, the Big Mac. Yes, it was not introduced until 1968, but it's such a staple of McDonald's. I mean, I want one right now. Next question, everyone. We think of all of these delicious desserts as American staples, but which one of these items was not made in America? Apple pie, chocolate chip cookie, or brownies? Hmm. Marisol? Dangerous, because if I get this wrong and I work in the sweet world, it's over. But I think it's apple pie. You think it's I apple think pie? I think it is. And I think you are correct. It is apple pie. Yes, apple pie as we know it first originated in England. In fact, the first recorded recipe for apple pie was written in 1381 and called for figs, raisins, pears, and saffron in addition to apples. So fancy. We're on to our next question. In 2003, history was made when the Human Genome Project was completed and it revealed that human DNA is 60% similar to what fruit? Apples, bananas, peaches. Marisol? I just didn't know we were sharing any DNA with a fruit, so I'm amazed. I hope it's a peach. It's like the most delicious one. Unfortunately, it's not a peach, but Hip, <sighs> Hip, would you like to steal? I wanna say bananas. Bananas, you say? Bananas is the answer, correct, yes. With that, Hip, hey, you're on the board. We love to see it, and this is still anybody's game. Keep going at it. Marisol, great job. Hip, great job. JD, great job. Next question, everybody. What is the most stolen food in the world? Milk, bread, or cheese? Marisol. If I, if I had to steal one of those things, I would steal cheese. It's expensive, too, so. Yes, cheese is the correct answer. About 4% of all cheese made worldwide ends up stolen. Clearly, none of these cheese thieves are lactose intolerant, I guess. Here we go. This is actually our last question in this round. Let's get into it. In the late 1700s, which animal was used by Native Americans as fertilizer for their soil and bait for their fishing hooks? Squirrels, turkeys, lobsters. Marisol? Lobsters. Lobsters is correct. Yes, it is. I'd, hip, I know, trust me. We finished our second helping of food history trivia, everybody. So let's check in on those scores and see who will be moving on to our final round. Hmm. Check in the scores and check in the scores. Wow, Marisol, you came out of the gates doing really well. Hip, very proud of you. You got on the board, you made it happen. Marisol, you had 225 points. Great job turning things around. Hip, unfortunately, you had 25 points, so you came up just a little bit short, and your meal service ends here tonight. Hip, thanks again for playing. I got you, thank you. Now, Marisol, we can confirm that we do have a reservation under your name for the final round, and it is time for one last game where you will compete head-to-head -head against today's mystery history expert. He's the founder of multiple highly successful restaurants in New York City and San Francisco. He's also a James Beard Culinary Award winner. Please welcome our expert, Danny Bowen. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Hey, how are you? It's great to be here. I'm doing well. All right. so. Marisol, you have proven that you're hungry for food history, but now let's reset the table and bring your score back to zero. Now, with a level playing field, let's get into our final game. Order up! 
And here's how it works. In this round, you'll be putting food, foodstuffs, and other food-related items into some kind of order. Correct answers are worth 100 points, but if you're wrong, then your opponent can steal for half the points. This is also a timed round, so we will get to as many questions as we can before the buzzer sounds. Players, are you ready to order up? Ready. Here is question one. List these foods in order of their invention. Kellogg's Eggo Frozen Waffles, Kraft Cheese Whiz, and Duncan Hines Cake Mix. Danny? I'm gonna say uh, cake mix, waffles, cheese whiz. Ooh, close. But Marisol is able to steal on this one. I mean, he kind of did a little bit of the work for me because I was stuck. I knew, I, I feel like cake mix has to come first. I can see that swan box. Then some Kraft cheese mix, because we were like, ooh, aerosol cans, that makes delicious food. And then frozen oh, waffles mm -hmm. in like the 90s, right? Lego my ego. I like the way that you think, Marisol, because that is correct. Yes, yes. Duncan Hines cake mix was in 1951, Kraft cheese whiz 1952, and Eggo frozen waffles in 1953. We're going to the next question. Let's get into it. Which of these foods was not part of a traditional order of English breakfast in the Edwardian era. Grilled potato, beans, black pudding, or eggs? Danny? Grilled potato? You are correct, sir. Grilled potato, nice. yes. I love English breakfast. It's one of my favorite things. Love it, we're getting spicy now. Let's do this. Next question. Which of these fast food restaurants was the second to introduce a breakfast menu? A, Whataburger, B, Chick-fil-A, C, Taco Bell, or D, Wendy's? Danny? That's tough. I, I would say Chick-fil-A. Okay, you'd say Chick-fil-A, and I'd say that is Chick-fil- Correct, it's, it's absolutely the answer, yes. Next question. Place these condiments in the order they were invented. Hellman's mayonnaise, French's mustard, and Heinz ketchup. Marisol? Is it possibly mustard, ketchup, mayonnaise? It is unfortunately not. Uh, Danny, would you like to steal? I'll say ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise. You are correct. Heinz ketchup came out in 1876, French's mustard, 1904, and Hellman's mayonnaise, 1920. Good job. Next question. Which of these candies was third to be imported for sale in the USA? A, Skittles, B, Kinder Joy Egg, C, Warheads, or D, Haribo Gummy Bears? Marisol? Third, to be imported for sale in the U.S. Kinder Joy was really recent. <laughs> Skittles and gummy bears are OGs, warheads. No, wait. Warheads. You chose warheads, and warheads is correct. Yes, it is. Wow. Skittles came first from the UK, actually, in 1979, followed by Haribo Gummy Bears in 1982, then Warheads in 1993, which were originally invented in Taiwan, followed last on this list by the Kinder Joy Egg in 2018. Next question. List these iconic items according to their original menu price, but in reverse order, starting with the most expensive to the least. One Pizza Hut cheese pizza, a Subway sandwich, one Dunkin' Donut, and a DQ Blizzard. Marisol. Let's say, I mean, Pizza Hut, pizza, the most expensive. What came first? No, Subway sandwich, the most expensive, then Pizza Hut, then a DQ Blizzard, and then a donut. I feel like a donut was like 25 cents. Close, but no cigar, unfortunately. That is wrong. Oh. Danny, would you like to steal? I'll give it a shot. So I think it would be a Pizza Hut cheese pizza, a Subway sandwich, a DQ Blizzard, and a Dunkin' Donut. Closer, but unfortunately, that's wrong too. The order actually is Pizza Hut cheese pizza, which costs $1.50 in 1958, a DQ Blizzard, which costs $1.29 in 1985. A what? Subway sub that costs only 49 cents in 1965. What? And one Dunkin' Donut costs only a nickel. A nickel! Wow. Back in 1948. That's a tough one. Take me back. <laughs> Uh-oh. Buzzer time. 
I'm hearing it and so are you. That brings us to the end of our final round. So let's check out those scores and see who is going to take home the win. Check in the scores, check in the scores. ba doop ba doop ba -doop. Danny, you came in, you did some good stuff. Marisol, you were also amazing. Very proud of both of you for what you contributed to this amazing show that we're on. But I am sorry, Marisol, you were unable to make it past our mystery history expert. You ended up with 150 points to Danny's 250. Oh, Danny. Well, all those restaurants no. just accumulated. Real up, real up. <laughs> Great job to both of you. With that, thank you to our contestants and thank you to our mystery history expert, Danny Bowen. Thank you all for watching, everyone. I'm JD Witherspoon, and this has been Pop History. Goodbye.